<laughs> Why are you? Don't touch my bum. All right, we're live, and we are the Minecrafters. This is Ingram and Captain Jack. Yarg. And uh, my screen got stuck. Okay. What are we doing today, Captain? Uh, remote transport. Ooh. Face pipes. Ender. Ender. Oh, I can't go that way. It just says Ender. Ender. Well, and there's tesseracts. tanks and chests and te yeah tesseracts. So we're gonna look at. Um, Face pipe, ender, tanks, and chest, and tesseracts, all the different options that they do. Um, ways to remotely power things, remotely transport things. We're going to look at all that crap today. Um, let's start with tesseracts. There's three of them, right? Items, liquids, and energy. They need this weird thing called an unattuned tesseract. Which is stupid to make. Which is, uh, yeah. But um, they're worth it. Then we have ender chests and ender tanks. This is not the normal ender chest. This is the one added by the um, ender storage mod. And then there's the three different type of phase. There's transport, which is for items, and then waterproof, which is for liquids, and conductive, which is for energy. And we tried to line them up. I'm yeah, and you should already know about these if you've watched the seven-hour tutorial on Buildcraft Pipes. <laughs> <laughs> if you <laughs> haven't seen it, there is one. Uh, there over it is there over somewhere. there. The captain worked furiously on that one. All right, okay. so let's start. So the uh, unattuned Tesseract. Um, tesseracts in general, this is one of the negatives. We'll get into all the comparison of the different ones, but um, one of the negatives is you need more advanced machines. It just, it just takes a long time. They're not necessarily difficult to make. But you got a pulverized obsidian um, that will go into this thing called an induction smelter with some pulverized lead and two pulverized obsidian. Makes this stuff called hardened glass. Um, and then hardened glass is used in this pattern here with a diamond in the middle. So you are going to need a diamond to make these. Um, and that gives you this empty tesseract frame. Then you slap that tesseract frame in this thing called a um, liquid transposer, right? Yeah. And what are we filling this with, Captain? We're filling it with ender pearls. Hi to make ender pearl juice. And this ender pearl juice goes into this thing. You need four ender pearls per um, tesseract frame. It'll fill it up, put it all in there, and then you get this thing called an unattuned tesseract. Now, if you don't have ender pearls and or obsidian. There is a very easy way to get those. We'll just show that um, right here. You can't. This recipe is a little glitchy for some reason. But if you take two oak wood and you have a uh, minium stone, that will actually get you one obsidian. So it's an extremely cheap recipe. Um, ender pearls can be made in this recipe for some reason shows uh, with four iron. Place it anywhere in there with a minium stone it gets you an ender pearl. So. It's not bad. It's pretty cheap. No Enderman hunting. Yeah, or you don't obsidian need to. mining with your pick, which is awful. Which is <laughs> which is awful. Yeah, it's a really easy way to get those. So that gets you your uh, your unattuned tesseract frame, and then you attune it. There's a bunch of different recipes to actually get the thing attuned to the different item, liquid, or energy, depending on what you're going to do. Um, and that's that's how you roughly. Uh, get into the Tesseract business. We'll talk more about the Tesseracts in our block spotlight on Tesseracts. What? Shameless plug for upcoming tutorials. Okay, so right, what, what else do we have? have? Uh, phase pipe and uh, ender oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, that's right. Phase so. pipe's really easy. <clears throat> Except for the fact you need uh, diamond gears. Yeah, well. So you need to make wood, stone, then iron, then gold, then diamond to get a diamond gear. And you slap those two bad boys, you need two of them. Gives you this thing called phase transport pipe. Then to make the different pipe... Wow, that's a graphic glitch for sure. <laughs> you just put redstone on top of a regular phase, and that gets you your conductive pipe. And you can do the same thing with uh, pipe waterproof to get phased waterproof pipe. All right, Captain. You got the screen, so you know oh, yeah. this stuff here. Fortunately, I do. All right, so then the final thing is Ender. So we talked about uh, transport pipes, talked about Tesseracts, and then the other two that we're going to talk about are Ender chests and Ender tanks. The recipes for those can be seen here, pretty easy. The only thing is you're going to need a blaze rod, and the captain is the, uh, he's, <laughs> he's slinking around the back for some reason. 
Um, you got to go into the nether to get a blaze rod, unfortunately. But in the uh, upcoming tutorial on <laughs> mob farming, we're going to show you how to get a buttload of... Um, actually, there's two tutorials that are going to involve blaze. You can either farm blaze with our oh, tutorial that's or coming. Or the maceration rig. Or the rig. maceration rig, which you can see the hull of the great boat right here. It's not actually a boat, although it looks like it. <clears throat> All right, let's speed this along here. Moving right along. All right. So these are the phase pipe. Captain, why don't you take us through this? Because I'm sick of hearing my own voice. All right, well, phase pipe uh, will transport power remotely. You just have to set the proper frequencies. So and he means phase conductive pipe, Captain, because there's three different types. Yeah, yeah, I've been spending too much time on pipe. I say conductive <laughs> when I shouldn't. And <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's like a prisoner um, problem. All right. So we have one conductive pipe. This one's hooked up to a co or, uh, combustion engine. And in order to po push power through to the phase conductive pipe, you're going to need it to be connected to another pipe, whether it's gold conductive or this wooden conductive. The only reason why the wooden conductive is here is that you need that to pull power out of the combustion engine. So if I power this combustion engine on, um, we're not going to see a beam of power here, but we will see not one from the wooden, yeah. over going into the tesseract. And why do we see one over here? Um, because we're hooked up to the proper channel. We have the first one set to send only. We have it set to a frequency of 100, and it's telling us there's two outputs. Now, this is outputting to this phased conductive pipe over here. and uh, Presumably somewhere else. Yeah, this one's somewhere else. <laughs> somewhere Somebody's in this leeching mess. off our power. I think I did it, actually. Oh. Um, so, yeah, this will transport power from one place to another remotely as long as you have it set to the proper frequency, and this is filling up a redstone energy cell right now. And note that this is set to send-receive on the receiving end. There is no specific receive. Um, I have this set to private frequency. This is one of the, the privacy features. You can either make the channel public, um, and then you notice like that beam cut because this one's still on the private. So if we put this back onto public, we should see power. Oh, this thing shut off. Yeah, I turned it off. All right. I wasn't going to tell you. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, It'll, you, you, can have, you can have your own private frequencies. Um, I don't know that there's a, a maximum on these frequencies. I didn't actually test that. I think that. there is, actually. Is there really? I, like 15,000, I want to say. Oh, I am I not, don't know if that's true I'm or not. I'm not clicking that far. Don't quote me. Because then you can go negative, too, right? Mm, can you go negative? I don't think you can go negative. Crap. I just totally screwed that up. No, okay. <laughs> no. So zero to something. <laughs> Um, and then we could see that it filled it up. It put 2670 uh, MJ in there. And that's uh, how you can conduct power with um, phase conductive pipe. That is our recommended means of transporting power for all the people that are playing Tech It Light. For people that are playing Feed the Beast Ultimate, you're going to have to do something else, and we'll get into that later. Um, all right, item transportation. Yep. Should we do energy on the other side? Let's do energy on the other oh, side. Oh, yeah, sure. Part. We can do that. Okay. Tesseracts? So, yeah, tesseract. So here's an energy tesseract. Um, these are cool because they're a lot like phased. There's different frequencies, but you can um, assign <laughs> channel weak sauce, whatever that is. <laughs> you can assign whatever name you want um, to a different frequency, so you don't have to remember all the frequency numbers. You can just say, okay, here the, here's the mob farm. That's on frequency 110. Weak sauce is on frequency 100. Oh, mob farm. I wonder what that looks like. Yeah. Oh. I've heard it's legit. It's pretty legit. <laughs> it's, anyway. not, it's not actually loading over there. It's over there. <laughs> um, so this thing right here is a, a red sun energy cell. Again, we have to use the, this is not golden conductive pipe. That's actually wooden conductive pipe to pull energy out and then into the energy tesseract. Now, the energy tesseract for energy sucks because it maxes out at 100 MJ per tick. Whereas the phase, I think, is 1,000. Um, and then you lose 25% during the transfer process. So it, that's according to the um, config file. But I noticed it was getting only like, it's like losing 30, 30 some odd percent. But anyway. Um, I'll destroy this real quick and put okay, it in. Put it on the there one. We go. can see it charging. So it's still pretty quick. You know, 100 MJ per tick, there's 20 ticks a second. So that's pretty good. And that's energy with um, tesseracts. All right, and we can't do energy with Ender items because that's only for liquid and items. So right, unfortunately. No option there. All right, let's hammer through the wooden transport pipe. All right. No, I mean phase I mean <laughs> <laughs> Okay, conductive pipe. Yeah, right. Okay, so if I turn this on, what it's going to do is it's going to send items through this phase transport pipe set to send only frequency 10. It's got one output, which is going to send it right over here. It's going to come through that really quick. Actually, this phase transport pipe acts as um, 
a gold transport pipe too, and it shoots items through very quickly. You can't see that happening here, and I actually didn't explain that in the pipe tutorial, but Fail. it will shoot items out very quickly through into the next chest. Yeah, I wonder why they're going so fast. So yeah, this phase transport pipe is set to send and receive. If it was set to send only, it would not receive anything. Right. Frequency of 10, and uh, it's private right now, but the other one's private too, so. Me private tubes. All right, so, so we have the same thing on the Tesseract side. Um, this is, let's see, is this one full? Uh, what's this one got? Let's see. What do you need to, what do you need? I'm not even really sure. So iron. we have a pulverizer set up. Yeah, put, put some, some iron, iron in there. there. See. There we go. Okay, so this... Oh, that's um, not working at all. No, hang on, hang on. This thing's configured... There we go, there we go. And it should pump um, ferrous metal. Oh, that's probably why it's not working. Oh, <laughs> I turned it off. That's why it wasn't going. Oh, okay. Hold on. Anyway, it's it the same deal on. while he's while Captain's setting that up. <laughs> it's the same deal. You can have your frequencies. You can name all the frequencies. So you just say, okay, iron dust is on frequency 100. Come over here. You set up the receiver to receive iron dust configure it make sure it's still public send receive and we can see that it's actually going through All right so it'll act exactly like this phase transport pipe um, except you don't need these intermediate like this regular or any type of transport pipe here um, and you do not need a wooden transport pipe to pull out of stuff yeah and a further benefit which we'll see in a second is that you can put machines on, on six sides of this thing right so it'll jam um, whatever has an available input so that's a really cool way to move items. Legit way to roll, all, all right. things considered. Ender, Ender next, because these two oh, items. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, mm, power so. furnace in there. Why is there a power furnace? I don't know. Oh. All right, so the cool thing about Ender chess is that there are 4,096 different color combinations. Let me just give myself some rose red. It's the only one I could think of in a hurry. You can color code each of these. If you can see, if you look really close, it's like a little hitbox for each of those colored tabs. It starts out all white, which you can use bone meal to reset. Yeah, I'll put one down right here. Oh, you got one? Yeah, right here. Solid. All right, solid. So here we go. This is a blank ender chest, and you can color code the top with any of the different dyes in the game. You can say, I want the first one to be red and the second one to be red. Now, each of those will create a different set of um, linked ender chests. And you'll notice that these two have the exact same color scheme on the top. Uh, I don't even know what that is, all those colors. But if we open the one, I'll try and get a good angle here. I think here. that's cyan. Crap. If we open the one, you can see that the other one also opens at the same time. You can kind of see that if you look in the back. Um, these two are linked. They are linked. This is important. They are linked interdimensionally or cross-dimensionally. You can put one of these in the end. You can put one of them in the nether. You put one of them anywhere else you can think of. Um, where's the other? Uh, like Miscraft, you can put them in those ages too. If you had a quarry in the um, in a Miscraft dense ore age, um, and they're linked. So if I put obsidian into this chest and walk over to this chest, the obsidian's there. All right, so that's kind of cool. The there we go. I found the combination. Did you though? Because the last go. one's pink. There we go. I was getting it. I was getting it. So now it'll open all three. Yep. So this is one of the problems: is that somebody can guess your combination. So the way to compensate for that is you get your trusty diamond. <laughs> I was wondering what that thing was for. Yeah. I've got a stack ready to go yeah. here. Oh, I've just been outsourced. So if I click a diamond on the lock on the front, it makes it mine. Um, the uncool thing about that is, so this one's now the captain's because he, he put it. So these are technically separate. Like if the captain puts something in his, it's not going to show up in mine. What would you put in there? Ender pearls. Ender pearls. So the thing that does suck about trying to personalize these things is I can still come in here and take stuff out of his. It's his set of frequencies, but it does not restrict it so that nobody else. It's not a personal safe. It doesn't work, right? So, but these things are awesome. They can. They just act like a normal chest. You can actually put blocks on top of them. Does anybody have a block? I got some sponge. Oh, sponge it up. <laughs> a normal chest would not open, but ender chests don't care what's on top of them because they're boss. So there you go. I knew the sponge would come in useful eventually. Yeah. I thought it was a block of cheese. All right, so it's liquid like transportation next. Okay. Oh, what is this green stuff in here? <laughs> Whoa. That looks like mob essence. Sure is. Woot. And yes, you can store it in liquid form. We'll show you how to use it in a different tutorial. 
<laughs> but this is one of the ways to move liquids. We have um, wooden waterproof pipe, and you can tell that it's waterproof by the little green stuff on the inside of the brown there. And then we have the phase waterproof pipe, which works the same way as the other phase pipes, except that it sends liquids. You have send only and send and receive. You want your receiving ends always say send and receive. Um, you want to set the frequency. You can set it to public, private. It'll tell you the owner in the bottom left corner. And this will send liquids from one place to the other remotely and interdimensionally. So, Woot. Yeah, all these, uh, important to notice, all these phase things work interdimensionally. Actually, everything in here works cross-dimensionally. It, it sure right? does. Yeah. Even these. What's this? A Which liquid tesseract. Twilight Forest stuff, if you're using that mod. Nether, oh, yeah. if you're using that mod. Um, the end, I don't know why you would build something in the end, but... <laughs> Just because <laughs> you're that cool. All right, so liquid tesseract, same as the things before. Um, the cool thing is, again, you can have different frequencies. You can say, okay, the water's on channel 200. Oil's going to be on channel 100. Um, we have an accuracy accumulator pumping water into this thing, and this liquid transposer is... Going to be set to oil, public access, receive, public access, send, and I don't know why this thing's not getting water. But anyway, oops, that should work, Captain. What are we doing wrong here? I'm not sure. Maybe this Frequency thing, 200? Maybe this thing's busted. Water? No. Oh, this is not good. It worked before. Well, well, folks. Well, seriously, why is this not working? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, oh, oh that's cause this thing needed a. There used to be a switch over here, and oh, there we go. Oh, oh. All right. So yeah, with all these uh, all these thermal expansion things, you have the ability to control them with redstone. Um, and this one was actually set to need a signal, um, and that's why. But there we go. We pumped water. Uh, through these liquid tesseracts. You do not lose anything as far as I know. You only lose stuff when you're using um, energy tesseracts, but nothing else. All right, Captain, take us away with ender tanks. All right, ender tanks work exactly the same way as ender chests. You can do all the same things to them. You can encode them uh, with three different colors using dyes or inks or whatever you got. Um, on the left, oops. <laughs> Uh, I personalized okay. that. We'll skip ahead to the personalization part <laughs> where Ingram has just used a diamond on the crank in front there to Whee! personalize the white ender chest system to himself. Yep. Um, so this is going to be a public chest on the right over here, and anybody will have access to it. But the same color combination over here is a private chest, and you can see that represented with the diamond on the front. Um, one of the things that you can do with the ender chest is set it to send and receive. Um, I believe... It works the same way as the Mine Factory Reloaded Colors, where orange up top is send, and blue up top is receive, and you can right-click that crank to change the orientation of those. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's draining <laughs> mighty quick. So there Actually, we go. what that does is it's not really send and receive. It's like share and don't share. So these two tanks are right next to each other. If blue is on the top, stuff will only go into this ender tank, but if I rotate it to the orange, watch. It's going to drain out of this one and go into the adjacent one. Just like that. Sharing is caring. So, good thing to keep in mind. These things are going to like bounce back and forth between each other. All right, so that is Ender Liquid Transport. Yeah, and just also to note that you can um, put these directly on top of things like an aqueous accumulator, um, a pump for your yep. lava. You don't actually have to connect pipe to this stuff. It'll directly receive liquids from whatever's next to it if the machine that it's next to has the ability to pump out. You know what else you can hook these directly up to? What's that? Auto spawners. <laughs> <laughs> auto spawners. You're going to want to see the auto farm. <laughs> yeah. That's, I really wish it was loaded. All right. Let's nail this out real quick so we can end this tutorial. Okay. So here's a, this is a, I'll like pause for a white. split second. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Mm -mm. Okay. So um, phase pipes, they have 100 or 1,000 millijoules per tick. I don't think there's really an energy limit. They're disadvantaged. They need a lot of diamonds. There's a lot of gears. Um, you only get four per two diamond gears. So um, you also, in order to link them, you need to remember the frequency numbers, which is more difficult than selecting from a list, which you can do with a tesseract. Security, you can have public and fri public and <laughs> private. Um, and if somebody, if you had like a public frequency for some random reason, it wouldn't be secure. Um, that's kind of what public means. Integration, the thing that sucks is you need to connect them to other pipes. You can't go directly from um, 
like a phase waterproof right into a tank. It doesn't work. That's why they get red on that column. Options, they really can only send and receive and then change the frequency. And their recommended use is only for energy. Uh, tesseracts, they have an energy limit, which sucks, and they lose power um, when they transport energy. You do need more advanced machines to craft them. You need lots of ender pearls. Um, when you link them together, you can select from a list, which is a lot easier. Security is good. You get public, private. You cannot see the list of frequency numbers. For example, if I change this to configuration, these are public access channels. Let me do it on this one. There's more. Um, weak sauce and mob farm are both public access. If I say lock this thing down, owner only, you notice that those are now different. And if I were to say weak sauce private as a channel frequency 100, save that frequency, this guy over here can't see that because that's my private channel. Unless I make it private, now I can see it. So good security on those. Um, integration, they're really good. They actually get green because you can slap them right next to a machine, which we saw here. You just slap them right next to something. Um, on the inbound and outbound that works on both ends and there's a ton of you can ignore redstone you can require redstone you can require no redstone there's send send receive and receive so they are recommended use for liquids and then last but not least ender there is no energy option which really stinks the materials they get uh, points deducted for that because they require blaze rods um, obsidian and ender, those are easy to get. They're very easy to craft. You require no advanced machinery to make an ender. Um, you require no machinery at all. The only thing is you need that blaze rod, and that's going to kill you. Um, uh, sometimes, literally. Linking, there are 4,096 combinations. You do need to know the exact color sequence, so they get points deducted for that. Um, security is kind of a joke with these things. Um, you can do public and private, but somebody can just walk up and steal stuff out of there if they can physically access it. So they get points deducted for that. Um, integration is the same as any chest or tank. They work exactly the same. Ender tank works just like a build craft tank, just like a thermal expansion tank. Um, same with chests. They replace any chest at all, so they get green points for that. Um, the options, they pretty much have empty or fill dial, and then there's 4,096 combinations. Um, but due to their ease of use as um, chests, they are the recommended transport method for items. So there you go. Here's your comparison matrix. I'll just pause if I went too fast. Dun, dun, dun. Learn all the things. All right, what is the captain? <laughs> the captain will now recommend first, second, and third place. Oh, with blocks uses of cheese. For, uh, well... They're technically all going to be in first place. Yeah. So we will not use the cheese. There's different categories. All right, so um, what have cheese we found when using all of these things? What's the best um, one of these to use in each one of the three circumstances, liquid items and power? Well, and, while and, you're building your cheese tower, we kind of went over that. Well, yeah, but... So, um, all right, so we, we didn't make any recommendations, and I think we decided that phased pipe or phased conductive pipe is the best way to move power because there's no power loss. Um, and that's only in Tech at Light, though. You're not even going to have this in Feed the yes. Beast, as far as I know. Feed the Beast, you got to suck it up and use an energy tesseract. Yeah, Feed the Beast Ultimate, that Ultimate, is. Ultimate, yeah. I'm not sure if it's in any of the ones. Um, liquid, I think, Tesseracts are the best choice to go with. But Ender Chests, I mean, Ender Tanks are great. They're way cheaper, way easier. Yep. Um, the only thing is, um, the reason we, I think, had voted those up is because you get these uh, frequencies. Ah, uh, yes. You can have get a the ton. List. Yeah, that's really convenient. Because when you when you set your ender chest up for the first time, everybody, <coughs> Chief Diesel, <laughs> forgets to code the top, so he <laughs> ends up flooding all the machinery connected to white, white, white with stuff like oil. You know, just pesky stuff like oil. All right, and I think we decided that item transport, um, the Hands ender down. chest was definitely superior yeah. as far as the cost to make and the ease of use. Yep, and you can yeah you can plug them into anything, quarries, slap a right on top of a quarry, and then have um, another ender chest in your base pulling all the stuff out of it. So you don't need to run pipe, you don't need to do anything. Alright, so this has been uh, remote item transport, remote liquid transport, and remote power transport. Um, you'll be able to see all of these items um, gone over individually in different block spotlights. Maybe aside from the phase conductive pipe over here, we'll definitely do tesseracts and ender tanks. Um, if you want a little bit more information on them, um, I don't know, is there anything else? Check out our website, theminecrafters.com, Facebook, theminecrafters.com, and Facebook as well. Um, yeah, yeah, that's it. Stay close.
stay classy, stay poised, stay poised. Stay poised. <laughs> All right, see ya. That was really